We've driven tons of EVs over the years, and to be honest, the novelty is wearing off. These cars are just part of our landscape nowadays. But if you're one of the people that still wants something fun, fresh, and unique, let me introduce you to the Nimbus One. Expected to start production by the end of next year and enter sales shortly thereafter, the Nimbus One is three-wheeled as you can see, but it has another interesting leg up over traditional electric vehicles. It's small, it's light, and it's cheap, and it offers a driving experience unlike any other. I'm about to jump behind the wheel, but before I do that, be sure to like and subscribe to the Inside EVs YouTube channel and find us on all of your favorite social media. Now let's go for a ride. All right, so this is my first time in the Nimbus. You are experiencing it with me in real time. And let me tell you, it is definitely an unusual experience. So it's not quite a car, obviously. It's got three wheels with you know two kind of narrow track wheels up front and a single wheel in the rear. Um, and it has a really interesting uh, suspension lean system where if you tip into a corner, the steering wheel is actually connected to the front wheels and, uh, and uh, the suspension architecture to kind of like help this vehicle lean in very naturally in corners, just like a motorcycle, which is, which is a, a pretty cool uh, distinction between this vehicle and some other three wheelers on the market, uh, in that it actually does lean over like a motorcycle. And yet you don't have to be a skilled motorcycle rider to enjoy this thing. It really does just kind of do a lot of the leaning work for you. You don't have to preoccupy yourself terribly much with how to drive it. There is a learning curve for sure, and this is a prototype, so not all of the suspension settings are production intent. Uh, they probably will still need a little bit of tweaking, and you can definitely feel that going over the bumps. It'll kind of hit a bump, and it will ever so slightly upset the leaning balance of the car in a corner, but you know, by and large, it's not a terribly, uh, not a terribly unpleasant vehicle to drive. Um, it's just kind of takes some getting used to for sure. At the same time though, it is a lot of fun. This is a really novel, unique driving experience. Uh, one that we're not really gonna see too much of in, in the current market. And so if they can kind of make this happen and they can kind of convince, you know, a new generation of customer to go for a neighborhood electric vehicle like this one, then that might be, that might be the future of mobility. We've heard this story before though, you know, we've kind of heard the whole, you know, only buy the kind of car that you need. Don't buy more car than you need. Don't get an SUV when a sedan will do. Don't get a sedan when a hatchback will do. Don't get a hatchback when a neighborhood electric vehicle will do. We've heard that song and dance before. Whether or not, you know, the Nimbus can actually make good on all of that is, is another thing. The other, the other thing that Nimbus specifically talked about was, you know, kind of a neighborhood car share type situation where you get a fleet of these and you have people reserve them one at a time, you know, for, for their specific trips. And I think that makes a lot of sense for urban centers. You know, you, you, car sharing isn't a new thing. We've seen it before, but this is really kind of where it makes a lot of sense. Cause this is a very lightweight, very efficient, relatively cheap vehicle, you know, only $10,000. Instrumentation is really simple. You've got a speedometer right here. You can activate messages on the, uh, the front and rear message panels. We'll do, uh, we'll do happy. Cause that's just really adorable. And we love that. Uh, you can also monitor your climate controls. There's a state of charge. Uh, this vehicle has four individual batteries that you can see right there um, that are all mounted underneath the driver's seat. They each weigh about 25 pounds. You can take each one out one at a time to charge it. Uh, you know, if you just need a, some quick, a quick jolt for the evening, you can bring the battery out and put it in your own charging dock right inside your own house. So you don't have to have a garage with a big heavy wall box, which is a really, that's a, that's a huge benefit to people who drive one of these instead of uh, you know a more conventional EV. You don't need to have a charging implement at home because you already have your charging implement just right there in your living room, which is a really, that's a brilliant idea. That's what's gonna make this vehicle most attractive to new buyers, to new customers, is they don't necessarily have to do that big, huge upfront investment of hiring an electrician to come out and run a new 240 volt line to their wall box so that they can charge their vehicle, especially if they don't own the house. You know, you don't necessarily wanna be investing all that money when you're a renter. This is a great solution to that. You have your charging unit right there in your living room, sitting on the floor. You bring one or four of the batteries home with you after you park the car and you plug them all in and they're fully charged by the morning. 110 volt, it'll fully recharge in about six to eight hours, they said. Uh, 240 volt, it's much less than that. It'll charge it, you know, uh, an hour and a half, you'll have a full charge. So, you know, this is really kind of just removing a lot of the obstacles to EV ownership. Of course, there are some drawbacks. It drives a little bit funny. It takes some getting used to, but by and large, you know, 
If people can be convinced to only drive the vehicle that they need, this is a great solution. With a price of less than $10,000, the Nimbus One will be one of the cheapest EVs on the marketplace. That plus the novel charging experience that allows first time EV owners to integrate this vehicle seamlessly into their lives could be very appealing for some people. Of course, there are a few compromises. The size isn't for everyone and a range of 90 miles limits you mostly to urban trips. But if you only need a vehicle occasionally just to get to the grocery store or take the kids to the school or the dog to the park, this could be the perfect urban commuter for you.